Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Sahir again. And uh, today I am going to start giving you some general advice on how to start programming and what's the platforms and the apps and softwares we're going to be using. All the things that you need to do just before the first recitation. So make sure you come to the first recitation with everything that I show you today and lecture three done already. Okay. Because it's going to help you a lot and it's going to give you the bush start. It's a lot of things. So that's like a warning. However, just make sure you you see everything. You follow the steps that I have. I brought a lot of time into the PowerPoints and the presentation to give you exactly the different steps. And also this video, I'm going to go through everything as we will need the, um, a VBN, a way to SSH, uh, all, all the different things over there. You don't have to understand everything right now. I'm just going to go and slowly explain some of these stuff. Um, you will get them over the course of the semester. So if there's like a specific question you have, make sure you email me with it and we should hop right into it, right? Okay. Uh, so let me share my screen here and uh, we can start going through some of the stuff here. I hope everybody can see my iPad screen right now. That's good. Uh, uh, okay. It's a little bit laggy, but uh, bear with me on this one, guys. Sorry. So what I did this time instead, uh, I made the PowerPoints. I'm going to also put them as PowerPoints and as a PDF. And then I implemented the PDFs on a, on a OneNote so that it's easier for me to... Because I know how to use OneNote. Okay. So again... Uh, this is what you need to start for EE312. Uh, get ready. This is the start. This is where we start programming and we pro be programmers. Um, SSH is the first thing that we have to do. And uh, the funny bit for today is shh, we are in class, you know. Okay. I know some of us, <laughs> a little bit cringe, but let's go with it, okay? <laughs> okay, so the first thing, the overview that we have, we have first thing, SSH. I'm going to explain what SSH is. SSH is basically going into the school servers from your home and being able to, because the school allocates specific amount of memory for every student. It's about two gigabytes, uh, two gigabits, two gigabits. Yeah, sorry. Uh, so the, the uh, I think two giga, yeah, two giga, sorry. They, they decreased it a little bit over the course of the last years, but what we need is a way to SSH into the servers. Every person has their own, think of it, as like a portal to go to another computer. And then on the other computer, you can do different things that you can do on your Windows or Mac. It's quite cool, to be honest. Okay. Second thing is C-Line. C-Line is the software we're going to be using this semester to start programming on. It's pretty simple. It's made by BrainJets. If you have ever interacted with the company, it's very good. You can add debuggers to it. You can add a lot of different attachments and plugins. It makes your life so much easier when you start uh, coding. The debugger, um, so this is the debugger. It's a plugin or sort of an attachment that is added to the C-Line. We're going to use it in like, um, I would say, we're going to use it around mm, recitation three, recitation four. So that means like week three, week four. So I may push it a little bit uh, right, right now, but uh, just understand that debugger is going to be a, an important component of your programming. Let's try to make everything works before going into the debugger state. Last thing is days two or the next lecture. Uh, make sure you also watch the next lecture because before coming to recitation one, right? Um, this is very important uh, on how to use Linux and how to uh, implement, um, you know, the different commands. You know, you see some people on like program, like on TV and stuff like just writing stuff on a terminal and all the commands are working. That's what I'm going to teach you how to do. We're going to be a little hackers over here. Okay. So, yeah. So in next lecture, I'm going to try to split it into two. Uh, the first sort of part is just for the class purposes. The second part of it is... If you really want to go in depth about it and understand more about terminal and how like all the commands and all the different commands in there, there's a lot of handy commands and a lot of people like Linux instead of Windows. And that's all the commands we're going to do. It's going to be on Linux terminal. Okay. Okay. SSHing. 
Again, this is what I showed you. So as you can see here, this is like a very basic thing that I gave you. So you have your client, which is your BC, and then you connect your router through a VBN. And then you do you, you go through this square, which is basically the SSHing into another server, and that's the school server. Okay. And so for each one of these person, they have an allocated space, and you can store different things in there. And you can your everything on the server is set to be used in Linux, and that's why we're learning about Linux. Okay. So here is just a, a basic uh, definition of SSH. You don't again. This is something you're gonna go in depth into if you're working on network and communication stuff, but you just need to know how it works, right? Uh, it's just a secure shell that is set between the, the, the client and the server. That's like the base, the very basic definition that you can give to someone about SSH. So first thing we want to do. Um, so the first thing you want to do is go to this website. What is this website? This is the professor's website. One thing, if you hate me and if you hate my voice, if you hate my presentations, you can go to the website and you can find all the steps there. there I, I, the professor gave in-depth about the uh, steps, but I'm just doing it because I know some people want visual aid and how to do it if somebody is doing it in front of them. Okay, the first thing we need to do is the VBN. So what's, first, what's the purpose of the VBN? The VBN will make your network connection secure. So you want your connection from your windows or mac to the school server to be as secure as possible right so the only way to do so is go through a vbn one thing you need to remember if you are on campus and you are connected to utexas you don't need to turn on your vbn right the only time you need to turn on your vbn is if you're home or if you're off campus or even if you're on campus but connected to the guest make sure you're not connected to the guest uh wi-fi connection so uh, as you can see, everything you can see there is hyperlinked. So you can just click on them and it will take you to, to, the, to the website. Um, we can, I can take you a little bit through, but uh, I'm going to go through all of this. OK, let's, let's do that then. OK. So the first thing you do is EE312. Right, that's the website, Professor Nanda Kumar, and this is the website that I told you about. Okay, so this, yeah, I'm not able to click on the things because I'm using this as a PDF. So, or actually, I think I have it also as a PowerPoint. So we can, oh God, no. Uh, okay, let me get it from the PowerPoint section and I can show you the clicks and everything. Okay. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. Okay, sorry. So yeah, I have my mouse now. So again, why is it not? I promise it is uh, linked, hyperlinked. <laughs> maybe, maybe if I switch to my BC. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to be switching between, you see, it's hyperlinked. So you click on this and this is the, the page that I give you in. Okay. So this is the page that has a lot of information in there, but it's really hard to it, like visualize all the different steps. So that's why I made this PowerPoint to divide them up, right? Okay, so we're gonna do this and this. Okay, so you go to this website first. Okay, cool. Second thing is just like, if you want, you can read through this. Second thing is we need the VBN, right? So this is the VBN web page. So the, the thing that you need to download is called, it's, it's again, Cisco Interconnect Secure Mobile Client. So that's what I told you about. That's the VBN you need. So you go in here, I think. And is there, and then authorize with Duo. Duo is the app that you download on your phone to authorize. And then you go through this and then download the VBN. Okay, that's one thing. Um, 
Second thing you need to do is you need to do your ECE LRC account. So on this web page that I gave you the first step, if you scroll down, that's ECE LRC account. So that's, and then you click the providing thing is sending you here. So what is this? This is all, first of all, what's brow, browser, Daisy, Mario, Yoshi, Wario, Kimmick, all this kind of stuff. These are all the different servers that the school have. And as you can see, all you, you care about here is the status. Is it online or offline, all this kind of stuff. Uh, when you do programming, try to use Kimmick, uh, Kimmick, because that's where I'm going to be grading your projects has 16 CPUs, it's pretty good, 64 the architecture, and it's always online most of the time. It doesn't go down, you know? So try to use it most of the time, uh, it's pretty good. Uh, but uh, for the ECE, you come here, sorry. Oh. So you come to this web page, you click on ECE LRC, and you go in there and you create an account. This account is your account, yeah, so this is your account basically for the server, the Linux servers. We're going to use this. So they're going to give you a username and you're going to set the password, I think. And so remember these, because these are very important when you're trying to go into the Linux machines. SSH terminal. Okay. Uh, again, this is just a quick reminder that if you're on campus, you don't need uh, uh, to turn on the VPN if you're connected to the UTEX as uh, Wi Fi. Okay. So let's go. So what is, okay, I downloaded the VBN and I created my account. What's next, right? Okay, you need an SSH terminal. So it's either Mobile Extreme or Xtiga. Okay, you need to download either this or this. I'm gonna show you both and how to download both. So if you click on the link, I sent you exactly where to go get them. So you go to Mobile Extreme and you just follow this, you know, you click it on here and it gives you like a little bit of configuration how to do it. I'm gonna also show you the configuration. So this is, which one is this? Mobile Xtreme, Mobile Xterm, sorry. And then you have Xtego. Xtego is also the same thing here. So what's the difference between both of them? Can I do both? Should I do one? You definitely can do both. I have both of them. And you can also definitely do which, whichever you like. Both of them are fine. It's a, this is the portal. This is how you go in there into the other computer. Do you wanna just be in the terminal? You download Mobile Extreme. Do you wanna be only, uh, do you wanna have like an icons just like Windows? You download x to go uh, This is for Windows, by the way. I'm not sure about uh, Apple. Uh, I think they support uh, either or, but I'm not quite sure. You'll have to double check. Uh, and double check with the professor because the professor is the one that uses an Apple. So if, if you can find it for Apple, either of them, double check with the professor because the professor knows something else. So this is the VPN. What does the, so this is what do you do? So after downloading it, right, I'm going to get Cisco and I have something like this as you can see on my screen. The, the, the thing that you add in here is vbn.utexas.edu. And I have it, as you see, it's giving me a tick mark because I am connected already. I can, let me disconnect and connect again so that I can show you what it is. So you put here the vbn.utexas.edu and then you click connect. You get three things here. You get your username, which is just the EID and you get your password. This is just your normal, Uh, sorry. So this is just your normal password. And then the second password that was shown in the this part, sometimes called second password, sometimes called the password. All it's all you put in there is the word bush, B-U-S-H. And then you go on your phone on the duo app and Oh God, it's not gonna show you. But on the Duo app, on the Duo app, it's gonna give you like, you have to, you know, click permission and it's approving. And as you can see on my screen, my VPN is working fine now. As you can see, it's giving me the green tick. So that my VPN is good. So that's the first part. Again, this is your EID. This is your password for your normal password for you, Texas. This is the Duo. Bass code and you put bush here. 
and here you put the VPN. The, the second window here on the left happens when you click connect, okay? Okay, now let's talk more about Mobile Extreme. I'm gonna show you Mobile Extreme and next to go so that you guys can choose which one you like more. Uh, and that's the time to choose and get used to it because that's what we're gonna be using for the rest of the semester. So this is my Mobile Extreme. Okay, so um, as you can see, I have two servers here. Uh, two logins, one on Mario, one on Todd. Let me edit the session and show you my, my stuff. So, first of all, this is not my EID. This, the remote host, is not the EID. This is the ECELRC account that we have created. And then add. Remember this. And then the name of the server, one of the servers, you can put Kamek, you can put Mario, Luigi, Yushi, whatever you want. Dot ECE dot utexas dot edu. Remember, it's port 22. And that's all you need, basically. You click SSH, you put this in here, you do all of this, and you say, OK. And then it's going to ask you, mine is automatically going to log in. OK, let me create a new one, right? SSH. Usually, the ECELRC is usually the, the, the first letter of your first name, followed by your last name. At, let's say, Kamek utexes the idea right that's all i need and then now we're trying to log in wait ah oh, i missed something up sorry it's camic dot ec dot e c e dot utexas did i miss uh, what happened okay let's try again Session is such at uh, at let's say camic camic dot ece dot u texas dot edu. Okay, as you can see here, now it's working fine. It's asking for me for password. This is not your EID password. This is the password for the ECELRC account that you have created. And I'm writing, but it doesn't show what I'm writing. This is just another level of security. And then you choose if you want to save it or not. Let's save it. So you see, now I'm on the new server. So again, MOBA X term is completely on the terminal. So now I am on a new thing. You see, like you, it's, it's, it's mostly on the terminal, but also the files are right there. These are all my files for different classes and stuff like that. So, so now here is where you're gonna use your, you know, things that I'm gonna teach you how to do. This is the Linux commands that we're gonna start doing. So basically we are now on, on the server and I'm just going through files and doing stuff right now. But that's, that's pretty much it, okay? I'm not gonna go in depth about the comments right now. It's gonna be next lecture. So wait for this one, you're gonna like it. Uh, but that's Moba X term. Make sure you, you see you like it or not. The good thing about it is if you wanna download something into your PC, your computer or upload something, it's pretty easy. Like you can say upload to this file and you choose from your desktop, whatever you wanna upload whatever you want to upload and then if you want to like download or something you can just click on anything and download it here download is gonna cho choose you where you want to download it in your pc so it's pretty good i like it a lot but again not everyone likes terminal right but once you get used to it you you should definitely switch ter to, to completely terminal right but if you have difficulties with terminal stuff you can go to uh x2go so i showed you how to download x2go uh, I'm going to show you how to start Xtra. So this is what you see when you try and start Xtra. Uh, okay. So. So I'm just going to put it in here because my webcam is on the top right and it's probably gonna do stuff. Okay, so this is what you get from Xtra. So all the sessions that you do are gonna be here. Those are the different ones. And let me edit one and show you what to write in there. 
So it's a little bit divided for this one. The first thing is the host. So you put, you know, the part after the at, if you remember. So it's like the name of the server dot ECE dot dot EDU. Here you choose your login, the ECE LRC account again. So it's the basically, it's probably going to be the first letter of your first name followed by your last name. And remember port is port 22. That's it. And then when you click on it now, you're just asking for your password. This is the password again for the ECE LRC account that you have created. And it's loading now. It's trying to connect. It takes a little bit more time because it's a GUI. So it's a, it's a little bit more, you know, frustrating sometimes um, with respect to a terminal, of course, because terminal does not need that much time to load and go through all the different stuff. What happened? Oh, it crashed. Amazing. Okay. And when it crashes, you click on a new terminal and it's going to pop up a new one. I, I was just saying, <laughs> the GUI is not the best thing ever. And I would advise people to use the terminal 24-7 because the terminal is just amazing. It's so much faster, so much nicer. You will like it a lot if you get used to it. But just in case you don't like terminals, you tried them whatever, right? For the purpose of this class, you can do it with a GUI or a terminal or whatever you like. Uh, I don't know what's going on. Uh, I don't know what's going on, okay. Let's try to terminate this and try again. Why is this going? I don't know what's going on. Okay, Windows 11 is not that good. Don't 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 update. So yeah, I click on this. Okay, it's starting. Hopefully, it starts. Um, okay, I'm gonna, I don't know what's going on, to be honest. I am gonna try it again later, but MOBA Extreme is, it's, it does that all the time, to be honest. So let me eliminate the other stuff and create a new one now. Maybe that will work. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Okay, I, I, will, I will try to do it again and come back and show you how to do it. I'm going to insert that at the end of the video. I think I need to like install it or something. But again, this is the same thing. Server name, port 22, your username. Oh, one thing I never showed. Uh, very important when X to go. You need to make sure that this part here is XFSC. And this is 800 by 600. But this is the resolution. You can change it later if you want. But all I'm saying is make sure that this here is XFC. Usually when you install it or you create a new session, so let's just create a new session. Uh, no, actually, once you create a new session, it's on KDE. Make sure you go all the way down to XFC, okay? Okay, let's get back to this. So those are the two different things you can SSH in, Mobile Extreme or x 2 Those are the terminals that you have. So the, again, the first step is the VBN. Make sure that the VBN is working. Second thing is creating the ECE LRC account. And that's for us to be able to go through Mobile Extreme or x 2 This is the VBN, this is Mobile Extreme, and this is x 2 Since we're done with everything, now we have the portal to go to Linux, right? Now, everything I'm gonna do right now is gonna be on Windows. But all the stuff before is how to connect to, to Linux. Uh, why do I need to connect to Linux? It's not going to be for this lecture, but for other lectures, you definitely need to connect to Linux because that's where you're going to do your grading because we're going to give you like a grading script and you can grade your project and see what grade you're going to get. And you can run the grading scripts only on Linux. That's why you're going to go to Linux. Okay. 
C-Line. Again, C-Line is the software, the piece of software, the piece of art that we're going to be using for this semester. This is where you're going to write all your programs. You're going to be stuck with this for a little bit of time. You know, this is where you're going to write all the different projects. We have eight projects in the class. You have a lot of in-class quizzes. You have a quiz every week. You have a lot of different things. So C-Line is what you need. You need to make sure this is installed day one. All right. Okay. Again, the first link I give you, this is the same link that I showed you before. This is where it shows all the different things. Again, uh, just for your reference here, uh, Mobile Extreme, Buddy, or, or WinSCB, these are all FFH uh, things. So you can use any of them. If X2Go or Mobile Extreme did not work for you, see which one works for you. Uh, yeah, when is see Yummy FTB, they said it costs a little bit of money. FileZilla is free. When is CB is free. Uh, Buddy is also free. A lot of different things are free. So you can download, you can try to see which, which one you want for file transfer, for like the portal to the other world, right? Okay. A virtual box, not very necessary. Like you don't need it that much. But uh, if you want to try virtual box, you can. So second thing we have is this is how you download C-Line. Like the link is right there. You just download it, right? But the problem with it is you need uh, a license, right? Let me put the license here. Let me put the license here. Uh, yeah. yeah, what is license? Yeah, so you need a license to be able to use, uh, to, to be able to use it. And so since we are students, we can apply for a license and it's, it takes like a minute to send you an email back. So it's not that big of a deal. You click on this link, you fill the application in here, you choose what level are you undergrad, grad or whatever, all this kind of stuff and put your email and everything. And they're gonna give you a code that you insert uh, in your uh, feline installation and get it for free. So luckily, because of uh, we are at UT and everything like that, and we are students, you can get it for free. Because it also asks for uh, the university email address. Make sure you put the universities in there. Okay, see Thigwin. Thigwin is another software. I know there's a lot of softwares you need to download. So I'll be patient, sorry. Thigwin is another one. Thigwin is one of the most important ones. Uh, Sigwin is for debugging and for the tool chain. Like it is how uh, C line is going to operate. So Sigwin and C line go together. You need both of them. So if you're or if you don't know Windows, follow this. I can show you. Okay. So you go to this website, you download, and then make sure you follow this step-by-step step. make sure you review it a couple of times because if you miss one here i don't know how to go back you will have to uninstall reinstall everything again like c line and sig again so make sure you understand everything you follow every single thing in here make sure you un you ask questions if you have any questions these are the different ones that you need to go and get them because they're this list is huge on C line when you're setting up C line make sure you go through this make sure you get C line for uh, sig one first uh, and then before uh, C, uh, C line, sorry, make sure you download. I mean, you're gonna download these packages exactly this one C mix, GCC core, GCC plus plus, GDB, and make. This make is like for making up the file, GDB is a debugger, G plus plus, and the core. C make is also for making up the file, G plus plus, and G core. We're gonna talk about them later on, okay. And then another step is that you will have to add it to your system pass. And that's because C line is not smart enough to find where it is. So you will need to follow it here and make sure you add it into, make sure you under you know where Sigwin is downloaded and make sure you, you add it to your environment. Also make sure it's added to the system variables and not these variables up here, okay? A lot of things to make sure of, okay? Make sure you follow this letter by letter because if you did not you will have to uninstall and install everything again it gave me so much headache so I'm, I'm trying to help here okay so now after you have c line right uh i'm gonna turn on c line right now and show you how it should look like and how to make sure 
feline is working fine now. So I'm creating a new project. The first thing we're gonna work with in this class is C. So you go in C executable, and then you choose where you wanna put your file at, right? And this is how you choose the name. Let's call it uh, intro, right? Oh God, intro, okay. And then the language we wanna do, we're gonna, using, we're gonna be using C99. This is the latest version of C. And then you create. And this is what we are getting. So a few things to see. This is the, the template that they give you. The include studio.h, we're gonna talk a lot about this. This is your main function. And then you have uh, printing. This is the first line of printing and then returning zero. The make list is all the different files that you have. So the only file we have for this project is main.cc, right? Main.c, sorry. And we're using, uh, Wait, what happened? Huh? And the name is intro C. This is the name of the file. Uh, intro and it's in C. And then we're making a CMake standard 99. And then just a standard library for all the different CMakes. And then the in, and then we have main.c. So if you add some, if you have something else, you'll have to put like, if we make another project 5.c, you'll have to add it here. Stuff like that, okay? to make sure everything works together. So, uh, so the few things you need to do to make sure uh, it works fine. I, I list them here. So the first thing is you have to double check this. You go into settings and then buildings and then tool chain. Building is executable the, the employment, okay? Deployment. So let me put it here. This is the setting here. So you click on setting, settings as the first thing. And you go build, execution, and deployment, as you can see here. And then you just turn it on, and then tool chain. And you look at your tool chain, make sure everything is fine. It should give you a plus on all of these three, and it should detect all the different things. These are the different things you have downloaded from SIG1. The environment is on my C, my C make is bundled, make, plus plus, C compiler, all of this are detected and also the debugger is also detected. So I'm in a good shape now. So that's that means everything works fine for me, okay? So uh, what else do we have? Uh, how do I load in the project? So let me put this. Did I change anything here? No. Okay, Any, anywhere. Uh, this is my terminal here and we can just make... Okay, okay, it's not the right terminal. Uh... What is happening? Why is it not letting me build it? This thing is a little bit confusing sometimes, but it should be pretty easy to get through. I don't know why it's not. It's saying that I'm, I edited something in the CMake. I did not. Did I change something by mistake? Uh, okay, let me check that the tool chain tool chain is good. Yeah, right. Yeah, that looks fine. And is this the everything is detected, so that's good. Uh, configurations now. Okay, let me try something. Let's see. Create. Let's see. That is weird. Uh, 
Oh, sorry. As you can see here, uh, we just needed to load. I think I changed something with the CMake. I don't know what happened, but I created a new one again. And uh, as you can see, this is the build. Oh, you can see it. Yeah, you can see it now. Yeah, okay. Let me just push it even here. So this is the build. So you need to build your project. And if you look down here, you'd say build is finished. Okay. As you can see here, build is finished. So my build is finished. Now I can run it. And it says, hello world. That's all I need. So that's pretty much it. That's how you make sure your C line is working. That's how you make sure if all the platforms are downloaded. On the next lecture, wait for me to explain to you more about how to be a pro with the Linux terminal. Well, that would be it. Thank you guys. And make sure you have all the stuff downloaded before the first consultation with me.